The 7800X3D launched to rave reviews. However, there was a lot of variability in the results. Some reviewers showed the 7800X3D eclipsing the Ryzen 9 7950X3D, while others maintained the Ryzen 9 on top. What is the reason for this variability and is the 3D V-Cache die on the 7950X3D faster than in the 7800X3D? Let's get into it. There were many reviews of the 7800X3D that declared it the gaming king. And looking at the results from the reviews, you find that Tom's Hardware had it at the top of the charts. Tech testers had it at 3.7% faster than the 7950X3D and Tech Power Up has it at 5% faster. Still others like Hardware Unboxed, Igor's Lab, and Computer Base showed the 7950X3D at the top of the chart. I looked for PC World's review, however, I didn't find one. Gordon had such extensive coverage for the 7950X3D, I thought he would cover this one as well. And PC Per, who had some weird issues with their 7950X3D sample, stated that they did not get a 7800X3D sample from AMD. But if you dig into the individual game results, you find even more variability in the results. Why? Is the 3D V-Cache die in the 7950X3D faster than the 3D V-Cache die in the 7800X3D? And when I look at Hardware and Box's review of the 7800X3D, he shows where in Cinebench, the multi-core frequency averages around 4800 MHz. When I test my 7950X3D with only the 3D V-Cache die enabled, my multi-core frequency averaged a very similar 4800 MHz. Hardware Unbox shows where in Cinebench, the 7800X3D single core frequency peaks at 5050 MHz. My single core frequency peaked at 5250 MHz, but it only does that momentarily. It's more in the range of 5150 to 5200 MHz, which is about 2% faster, but that is only single core. They are very much the same once it unparks more cores. That's right. I said unparks more cores since even if you run with only the 3D V-Cache die enabled, the AMD provisioning drivers will still park the cores. Tech Power Up described the core parking fail they had when they swapped the 7800X3D into the same system they tested the 7950X3D. They noticed slower performance with core parking in the 3D V-Cache die. It was in the reviewer's guide under known issues. And Tom's Hardware experienced the same issue and has a detailed and interesting article. I highly recommend you go and read it and I'll leave a link in the description below. They also saw a performance decline when installing the 7800X3D due to core parking. The AMD reviewer guide states that the changes the AMD original chipset drivers made to Windows cannot be completely reversed. And the only way around it is to do a fresh install of Windows except that didn't work for Tom's hardware. Because even on the 7800X3D, the chipset driver package is still needed for other purposes. And due to a bug in AMD software, it still enabled core parking on their test system after a fresh Windows install. So even in the day one reviews, you really don't know if the differences between the 7950X3D and the 7800X3D were due to the cores being parked. AMD said that the 7800X3D cores should never park, but they did not explicitly say that in the reviewer's guide. So who really knows what each reviewer's system was doing during all those benchmarks? The source of the variability is due to AMD's buggy drivers. That's why there's not a clear consensus or winner. I then thought we could look at AMD's data. Surely they would not have these issues. This is a chart showing the 7950X3D performance in comparison to the i9-13900K. This other chart was also leaked prior to the review and shown at video cards, and that shows the 7800X3D performance in comparison to the same 13900K. Putting both charts together, you see that the 7950X3D has two games not included below, and you see the 7800X3D comparison has one game not in the comparison above. So I removed those games and plotted the performance comparison of each versus the 13900K. If you look at the 20 game average, the 7950X3D is 6.9% faster than the 13900K. 
the 7800X3D is also on average 6.9% faster than the 13900K over those same 20 games. What is very interesting is when you see the orange line, which is the 7800X3D, fall below the red line, which is the 7950X3D, and you might assume that it is due to the game preferring the faster cores of the 7950X3D. But what about the cases where the orange line is above the red line, where the 7800X3D is faster than the 7950X3D? We just learned the 7800X3D is not clocked at any higher frequency, so why? To see the differences much clearer, I subtracted the red line from the orange line, and I only want to focus on differences when they are greater than 5%. Anything under 5%, and we'll just chalk that up to test-to-test -test variability. When the difference is more than negative 5%, that means the 7950X3D is faster, and you see four games that stand out. When the difference is more than a positive 5%, that means the 7800X3D is faster and you also see four games that stand out. From this, we can see the 7950X3D is faster in Rainbow Six Siege, Guardians of the Galaxy, Middle Earth, Shadow of War, and CSGO. The 7800X3D is faster in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, Dirt 5, and Total War Three Kingdoms. Now, AMD also released a chart showing the direct comparison of the 7800X3D versus the 7950X3D. So let's compare the two results. Remember, the 7950X3D was more than 5% faster in Rainbow Six Siege, Guardians of the Galaxy, Middle Earth Shadow of War, and CSGO. But AMD's slide is showing that all of them are less than a 5% difference. Comparing the 7800X3D results, it was more than 5% faster in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, Dirt 5, and Total War. In AMD's comparison, only Total War was more than a 5% difference. So even AMD's own results are not consistent. What a dumpster fire with these drivers. Why did they even release the Ryzen 9 X3D CPUs with these buggy drivers? But I'm still not happy with the implementation because I've noticed AMD drivers wants to park the cores all the time. When I'm working, it just wants to park the unused cores. Why? I'm not gaming, I'm working. There are no games up and running. Stop parking the dang cores. This is ridiculous. I have so little faith in AMD's provisioning and optimization drivers doing the right thing at this point. Think of it this way. How many Ryzen 9 X3D chips will AMD sell that require this provisioning driver and core parking feature? And how many people will just buy the 7800X3D? When the 7800X3D launched on April 6th, all of a sudden, Ryzen 9 7950X3D CPUs were also available at the same time. Seems like AMD has been stocking up over the past six weeks. When I put the 7950X3D in my cart, it says that there were at least 462 other people with that CPU in their cart. That CPU sold out within 40 minutes at Newegg. The 7800X3D was available for hours. And if the number of Ryzen 9 X3D CPUs sold are very low, I highly doubt AMD will spend much time and effort to fix those Ryzen 9 X3D specific drivers. Just not enough customers for them to even care. So now I'm trying to understand, how can I use this CPU for work in gaming and not have to rely on Game Bar or AMD's buggy drivers? The 7950X3D was launched six weeks ago. This anemic and insufficient blog post by AMD has not been updated since February 28th. AMD should have at least posted the guide they gave to reviewers, the one I showed and linked in my last video. It's clear AMD has abandoned its highest paying customers to go figure it out for themselves. If I'm going to take control, I'm taking total control. I don't like the idea that AMD is content to release buggy software. And who knows if that could lead to something being unstable in my computer I use for work. I'll let you know what I come up with in an update video and share with you any performance differences I see in work or gaming. Next is the release of the RTX 4070. I gave my thoughts on that GPU back in January, and nothing has changed my opinion since. But I am semi-excited based on my experience with the 4070 Ti. I am interested in getting the 599 MSRP model on launch day, since it is the least egregious of all ADA GPUs released to date, and likely to be the best value this generation, if you have to get a new GPU. 
Let me know in the comments below if you are interested in the 4070. And while you're down there, leave a like, share this video, and consider subscribing. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.